them one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-81. Last time on the Bard's podcast, the party learned of a bounty put out on their heads from the criminal syndicate in Phoenix. The information was obtained from Tressa Norink, commander of the Watch at Tunis. Her non-committal approach to the issue was enough to give pause for thought to both Cabe Silvertongue and Sister Elaine. Despite her style, the guard leader tore up the notice and considered it a non-issue. The discussion ended with Cabe accompanying the attractive woman on a picket inspection of the troops and the cleric relaying the information to her associates. We rejoin them as they brainstorm options. Karina looked glum and shook her head. I thought certain Dingus and the Bishop would be able to resolve the matter. I hope they are okay. Her sadness was evident and shared by the rest of the group save Bulger, who had no idea who these people were. He patted the waves back in a reassuring tone and pointed out that they were probably fine. He spoke to the group and pointed out that he had heard rumors of the Syndicate putting out assassins for people, but never thought he would be in the company of anyone so powerful. You guys must have really made an impression on those criminals, he openly mused. The group looked pensive until Fargus clapped his hands on his knees and stood up. Hey, cheer up guys, we have a party to attend. We would not be magnificent heroes if we were down in the dumps. We should be happy that Commander No Rank gave us the heads up. Hades, uh, we could have just as easily been in the jail cell waiting to get dragged back to Phoenix. How much was the reward anyway? If it's high enough, I may just turn myself in, he said in a laughing tone. Sister Elaine thought for a moment, but couldn't recall if she noticed the amount. She pointed out that she was so upset at the initial news and didn't read it carefully enough. Lady Irena asked if the commander would let them read it again, but Elaine pointed out that they had already gone into the fire. Bulger stood up and patted his belly. I'm hungry. You think it's too early to go over to the Feathered Pig Tavern? Growling stomach signaled that the former sailor was not the only one thinking the same thing. The woman pointed out that they needed a few minutes to get ready, and they could meet Fargus and Bolger there. The two groups split up with the ladies returning to the inn to get a change of attire more suited to a party atmosphere than for attacking a guard station. The males moved down the street with purpose and discovered that the miners had already begun the celebration and it had spilled out into the street. People moved about freely with large mugs with ale. Broad smiles crossed the men's faces as they approached the jovial celebration. The crowd started to scatter and Bulger jumped behind his larger associate, causing the ranger to laugh. <laughs> you gotta see this, exclaimed the large human. Bulger came back around putting away his weapon. The crowd had cleared as a large keg had been tapped, spraying the potent spirits everywhere. Laughing and pointing, the crowd of miners jeered their boss as he struggled to tap the keg. Fumbling to secure the loss of liquor, he was pushed aside by Tyra, who took a solid whack with a mallet and successfully ended the sprain. The crowd cheered and Geldor rumpled his forehead, but quickly got over it and gave his partner a big hug. A few of the miners spotted the approach of the adventurers and ran up, giving them frothy mugs of ale. The pair gladly accepted the vessels and bowed politely before tapping their mugs together and quaffing the entire beverage. Wiping their mouths, they gave out a large warrior cheer, catching the attention of Geldor, who motioned them over and refilled their mugs quickly. Back at the inn, the ladies finished donning celebration attire, with all three strapping daggers to their inner thighs, just in case. Each nodding in approval, they headed out of the door of the crossed swords to head down the street. While leaving, Karina gave a backwards glance toward the stable and noticed that Eddie and Peepers had become quite close and appeared to be playing tag in the corral. Smiling broadly, she quickened her pace to catch up to the mage and cleric. As the trio of females turned the corner, the celebration had reached fever pitch. The street was choked with miners and citizens alike, with guards patrolling the edges of the enormous crowd. 
A quick scan showed no signs of Tressa or Cabe, which was considered unusual by all three women. Their concern was quickly forgotten as Lady Irena pointed out, uttering, Good Lord! at an interesting sight. Perched high on some caskets of ale were Geldor, Fargus, and Bulger singing a rather suggestive and inappropriate gnomish song suitable for a sea voyage. Karina blushed at the lyrics as the elven wizard shook her head. Sister Elaine took a more amused stance and smacked both ladies on the shoulders. Relax, girls, they're just having fun. The women passed through the crowd politely until spotted by Tyra. She had a trio of mugs in one hand and one in the other. She greeted the women joyously and gave each a mug and a hug before sipping on her own. Do you always do this? shouted Lady Irena over the din of the crowd. Tyra shook her head and pointed out that it was usually much more tame, but the haul from the mine was very well and closing it brought Geldor into an exceptionally good mood. He had decided to make the party an open event and invited the townsfolks. He feels that if they are invited, they will be less likely to complain to the guards. Music pierced the din of some strange woodwind instruments. The chief miner and two adventurers jumped from their precarious perch and made their way to their associates. A makeshift band of miners and citizens began to play some folk music, and the middle of the street cleared. Geldor quaffed the rest of his drink before hanging his cup onto his belt. Bowing politely, he extended his hand, which Tyra quickly took. Dragging the woman out to the middle of the street, the old miner showed his dexterity as he whirled Tyra around with rather impressive dance moves. The crowd cheered, and several others joined into the dance, including the newly arrival pair of Cabe and Tressa. A trio of young men approached the mage, cleric, and waif, and pro-offered their hands. Karina quickly jumped at the chance to dance, and Lady Irena politely accepted as well. Sister Elaine was hesitant, but also accepted and made her way out into the street. Bulger and Fargus finished the contents of their beverage, and the tipsy gnome bowed to Fargus in a mocking tribute to dance. The ranger popped the former sailor on the head with his mug before both fell over laughing. Helping each other up, the pair found their way over to the liquor wagon to refill their flagons. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.